Hey everyone, how's it going? David Horowitz here, CEO and co-founder at Retrium. I just got back from an amazing week at the Retrospective Facilitators Gathering. This is a week-long retreat uh, that happens every year where people who are just as obsessed about retrospectives as I am get together to share tips and tricks and learnings from the year to help spread some knowledge about best practices around retrospectives. And there's so much I want to be able to share with you, but today I want to focus in on this question that I had an insight from uh, the, the gathering that had to do with uh, who should be facilitating your retrospectives on your team. You know, a number of times when I've been at conferences, I've gotten the question of, you know, I'm the scrum master on my team, and I want to participate in my team's retrospectives, but that's hard to do when I'm also the facilitator. What's your recommendation? How do you both facilitate and participate at the same time? Should I be participating at the same time? And at the retrospective facilitators gathering, there is this brilliant idea that we discussed for quite a long time called a circle of retrospective facilitators, where you'd actively discourage you from facilitating your own team's retrospectives. Instead, you'd volunteer to facilitate another team's retrospectives in your organization. This has a lot of advantages when you stop to think about it. Number one, if you're facilitating another team's retrospectives, you don't have a stake in the game anymore. And so you're able to be a, a dispassionate facilitator for that team, which gives you a leg up in your ability to analyze the situation and adapt your facilitation techniques over time with that team. Secondly, it allows you to participate in your own team's retrospectives without having the burden of being the facilitator as well. You'll get somebody else to facilitate your retrospectives. Third, you get exposed to new ideas around facilitation. If you watch other people facilitate retrospectives when you're the participant, you're going to learn how to level up your skills by watching others do what they do best. And fourth, you get this incredible advantage of learning what's going on in other parts of the organization. So if you're always limited to the scope of your own team when you're facilitating, you always hear about the problems your team is facing. But if you start facilitating other teams' retrospectives, you'll learn about their successes and you'll learn about the problems that they're facing. And if you're able to find out impediments from not just one or two, but three, four, five other teams in your company, you'll start to find patterns. And that's going to give you insights into the organization you work with that otherwise you would not be able to have uh, without this idea of, of facilitating other teams' retrospectives. Lastly, it helps you at a personal basis because if you, again, are limited in scope to just your team, then your name is going to be limited to your team. Other people in the organization won't necessarily know about you unless you're a good networker and take other people to coffee and so on. But if all of a sudden you start interacting with other teams because you're facilitating their retrospectives, that gives you and your name brand more, more exposure inside your organization and levels up your value to your organization as well because you now have these insights that give you an organizational point of view as opposed to a team point of view. So the tip for today is think about organizing a circle of retrospective facilitators in your, in your company. Thanks very much. I'm David Horowitz, CEO and co-founder of Retrium. If you're struggling running effective and engaging retrospectives with your team, I highly encourage you to check out Retrium. I guarantee you it's going to help you level up your skills. Have a good one, everybody.